You ever wonder why you might be hearing your own voice differently compared to how others are hearing you? For many people who don't sing as a hobby or professionally, it might be really shocking when you hear yourself on a voice recording and you're like, ah, I hate the way I sound. I've had a sore throat for a month and a half and this is not an acoustic environment that's suitable to request this from me. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit. And obviously for singers, it's also a thing, particularly at the beginning of your training, but then throughout with the way we perceive how we sound and how that affects how you sing. But before we dive into that, my name is Liza Quinn and I just wanna say thank you for joining me. If you'd like to have fun conversations about nerdy singer stuff or learn from your favorite singers together with me, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So let's dive into this phenomenon. Hearing your own voice differently than others hear it is due to a combination of factors involving both the physiology of sound transmission and the way the brain processes auditory information. So let's talk about the first thing, which is physiological differences. When you speak or sing, sound vibrations travel through the air and they reach your ears externally like they would for anybody else who's hearing you. However, an additional component comes into play and that's bone conduction. When you produce sound, the vibration also travels through the bones of your skull and directly stimulate the inner ear. So it's this additional pathway that's going to produce a sound that's different internally versus the sound people hear externally. A lot of people ask me, why is it that I sound so great when I'm in the shower? Or maybe you feel better when you're kind of rocking out in your car, or maybe there are different places where you don't quite like the sound of your voice. But that feeling of kind of being alone and just letting loose, obviously that freedom is gonna kind of let you let go. You're gonna support your voice in ways where you don't really think about it. So a lot of times when we're trying to get a fuller, richer sound, maybe a more projected sound, it's just about kind of reaching into that voice that you would use to reach across the parking lot, right? If you're like, hey, you've got my keys, right? It's that kind of support that you don't really have to think about. You just kind of go for it. So not having to have that extra layer of like, oh, I got to think about technique and then having that freedom where you don't feel judgment is great. Now, there's the element of you not judging yourself because of this perception. You might see on TikTok, you know, people singing in, in the parking garage, getting that great reverb. There's that perception, right, of like, oh, this is a very broad, welcoming, wider sound. The frequencies are pleasant to my ear. The more you like what you hear, the freer you are to let loose, the more supported you are because you have that kind of encouragement, that engagement, that full engagement, right? With like emotional and physical. And you're like, yeah, I'm rocking. And that just keeps, it's a cycle that keeps going. But then there's also the idea of having the perception of what you think you should sound like which is something that we can also dive into a little deeper. But before we do, let's talk about frequency response. So the human ear is sensitive to a wide range of frequencies, but the transmission of sound through bone accentuates lower frequencies. Consequently, when you hear your voice internally through this bone conduction, the lower tones are actually emphasized. It's giving your voice kind of a richer, deeper tone. And that's in comparison to how people hear you externally. So it's something to think about when you're thinking about finding good vocal balance, a good balance of frequencies, which is something We'll, we'll talk about it in another video. But finding that balance just really helps you achieve a more inviting sound, a more well-rounded sound, helps you have more balance internally with what's going on technically. If what I hear is like this kind of nasal and that bothers me when I hear it back, how can I adapt it? But there's also the aspect of just getting used to it. So you also have to think about the more you do it, the more you listen to yourself, the more you get used to this yourself, the less you judge. And as you start understanding how to maneuver your instrument, how to add some of those frequencies or subtract some, you can also start to go like, okay, it's not permanent, right? I can adapt some things using my articulators, using the airflow, using my emotions, and I'm producing a sound that I feel is inviting and exciting and keeps looping that cycle of emotion to keep you doing better every time. The last factor in this phenomenon is neurological processing. So the brain receives and interprets auditory information from both internal and external sources. However, it processes and integrates these signals differently. So the brain's already accustomed to your voice's internal resonance because it's been hearing it since birth. Therefore, it might interpret that internally perceived voice as the real or true voice or the correct representation, leading to a discrepancy between your perceived voice and how others hear it. This phenomenon is known as the internal-external dichotomy in voice perception. And because these scientific principles underpin the idea that a singer may be perceiving their voice differently from how others hear 
here can really affect your confidence and self-perception. So understanding this can really help us to bridge the gap between that internal and external perception so that we can ultimately enhance our vocal performance. Scratching the surface, I have a few general tips that will help. One is controlling your breathing. And I'm not just talking about learning breathing technique for singing, yes, but I just mean learning how to breathe enough to focus. And this is something that we use in daily life, uh, whether you're a singer or not. It helps me get a rhythm, a pattern, it helps me get a mind-body connection, and it helps me get focused on the task at hand so I can come in with sort of a, a more peaceful and relaxed mindset. My next tip is to embrace your unique sound. And know that even though you sound the way you sound, right, you have the tone that you have, there are things that you can work on to enhance that tone, that it's not this like permanent thing that you can't change. It's gonna be you, but it, it can be some sweeter versions of you, the same way when you're expressing yourself in your daily life, right? There's like a sweet talk or an apologetic talk or any kind of emotion that changes the way you kind of approach your voice. There could be anger, there could be excitement, right? There's all these things that you can bring out in your voice through un that understanding, that training and that technique. And by applying that stuff, you can find ways to enhance and create the best version of your voice that you love, that you love to listen to. But before you do that, find what you love about it. Is it a rasp? Is it a cry? Is it a little twangy? Start to discover all those things about yourself so you can really learn to appreciate it, latch onto those things, and then grow from there. And lastly, aside from the technical, so much of this is mindset. Try to get to the core of what's holding you back and you're gonna see that it's gonna help you to control how it's manifesting itself physically. Is it fear of failure, judgment? Is it fear of cracking? Oh my God, it's the most devastating thing. But if you don't make those mistakes in practice, you'll never know how it feels when you do it right. You need to be able to recreate that correct feeling. And you want to just have those mistakes and let them happen and be fearless in the practice so that you can learn what not to do, right? How to avoid those mistakes. The more you do it, the more you're gonna get used to hearing yourself. So record, 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 whether it's on a voice note, it doesn't have to be a professional recording studio setup. Obviously you're gonna sound different on different rigs and you're gonna learn about all that stuff, but just record yourself, listen back as much, as much as possible. That's the best way to get to know yourself. Start building that confidence, get your brain used to those sounds. Let me know what experiences you've had with this. And I'd love to know if you like this kind of content and if you found a lot of value in this because that's what this is all about. So thank you so much for joining me and I really look forward to seeing you on the next one.